Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Reference Point. I'm your host, Dave Cokerhook. And with me this evening is a gentleman from the small, U.S. Small Business Administration. We're going to have an, a tremendous conversation here today. We'll probably end up doing two episodes on this topic regarding um, how the SBA can help the emergence of small business here in America. We have an interesting economic time. There's a lot of people trying to start businesses, and the SBA is a resource from the federal government that's there to help with that. So I would like to welcome Mark Quinn. Mark, Thanks, pleasure Dave. to have you here today. Thank you for it's joining us. I like the introduction because that is exactly what we do. We're a small business agency. Fantastic. And you're here, you're, you're the district director for the uh, Northern California, or, well, actually, wh what is the official name for the district you serve and where is that? Geography? I think you pretty much got it. We're the San Francisco district office. So, okay. so we cover the territory from Santa Cruz to the Oregon border, but basically the Bay Area is really the focus of what we do. So all of the, the major activity that, that SBA does in our district is really the Bay Area is the big right. part of it. But you'll go up through Marin County and- We do, and all, the way, north, all the way up, up to the Oregon, Oregon border. border. Fantastic. Exactly. So let's talk a little bit about the SBA in general. I think, you know, most everyone has heard of SBA. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure they fully understand what it is, that the purpose of the organization, when, you know, so maybe you can give us a little bit of the history and the purpose, and then we'll dive into some things about how people can uh, take advantage of those types of services. So sure, sure, absolutely. My pleasure. And you introduced it correctly. We're a federal agency, and what we do is we help small businesses get started and grow with a couple of ways we do that, um, particularly in helping them finance their business, which most people, when you say people have a, a little bit of a familiarity with SBA, it's probably about the SBA lending program. So right. we'll talk a lot, I hope, about that. But we also do a lot of assistance to people who are thinking about starting a business, interested in starting a business, um, but don't know where to go to get the kind of basic information to know how do I do it. Right. And so they may have a real interest or a, a talent or a craft and they want to do something and start a business, but the management of it and how to get started, how to develop business plans, we think that that's equally as important as getting financing for your business. Well, it's critical. If you don't have those kinds of basics in place, it's hard to actually operate a business because you don't know where it's going to go or, you know, you got you got people to hire and marketing to do. And like you say, if you can try to get any kind of lending, if you haven't got a business plan, it's very difficult to do that. So the, does the SBA, like your office, does it do that mm -hmm. sort of service directly? We do a little bit of combination of things. We do a lot of training and one-on-one and -on -one consulting with businesses in our office in San Francisco. We're located in downtown San Francisco. Uh, and so we see a lot of businesses coming to us. We do a lot of classes in our office for small businesses on a wide range of topics. Right. And what we realize is small businesses really need to get a lot of assistance uh, on the basics of managing and marketing um, and understanding the money they need for their business. Uh, but then we also fund a number of partners uh, throughout the Bay Area that do SBA assistance, both lenders, both the SBA lending right. program, but also those who do training and technical assistance throughout the Bay Area. So in the Bay Area annually, we probably have about a thousand classes really? that small businesses could take either directly from us or from partners who we fund. Uh, on a wide range of topics, things that are basic, you know, getting ready for financing, right. but also how to use social media for your business or how to understand how to better market your business. One of the things we always see is small business people um, always have a tough time in really the management side, the marketing side, and understanding the, the money side of business. So right. we try to really use that as the, the, the start off point to do a lot of training classes for small business. And like I said, we probably put on about a thousand classes a year. Well, that makes a lot of sense because a lot of times someone will start a business because they have a talent or they have a skill or they've been uh, displaced from a, a position and they want to take advantage of something that they, some knowledge base that they have, but they have not had the experience of operating a business. They're not a serial entrepreneur that's done right. this multiple times. And so you run into these, these arenas where you need some knowledge. The, these types of services, Mark, is there a, a service fee for those or, or no? Most of them are actually free. So, um, and, and as I said, I think the counts, the training part of it is a big part of it. But I also should add that we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one counseling and consulting for small businesses really? as well. So in addition to taking classes that you can really get some basics about how to understand the business plan for your business or how to better market, we also do uh, support training or consulting work that individuals can go in 
and get assistance from small business development centers. We have about 10 small business development centers in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. um, and our SCORE chapters, uh, volunteer counselors who do one-on-one -on -one business counseling for businesses. So you can, you can get personal information. And to your other question, uh, most of that is free. So the SBDCs, the Small Business Development Centers, and, and the SCORE organization are affiliated with the SBA? Exactly. Ah, so okay. SBA funds the Small Business Development Center program, okay. and who is hosted by a number of partners in the Bay Area. Right. But we, we put up, we SBA put up half the funds that get matched by our partners. And then they do one-on-one -on -one assistance to small businesses. The consulting is free to small businesses. So if you're a business person, you want to get advice about a technical matter about your business, you know, need some legal advice or mm -hmm. understanding how to get some advice about negotiating a lease. A small business development center is really the right place for you to go. And if you're interested in getting startup advice, mm -hmm. you're interested in you know moving into entrepreneurship. And after the first of the year, a lot of people think my New Year's resolution will be I'm going to start, start a this. business. This is right. the time <laughs> to do it. And so a lot of people think this is the time to do it. But what, how do I do it? What's my first step? Right. And SCORE is really the best place to do just that. Go to SCORE. A counselor who has been in business their career can give you advice about what's the first steps you need to do. Well, I think that's pretty incredible. I mean, I, I've been familiar with the SBDC network. I, I wasn't clear on exactly how it was affiliated with the SBA mm -hmm. and connected to the SBA. But I think that's a, a huge advantage to anyone who's looking to start a business because this, this information is... I, there are so many w locations where you can get consultative services, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of them you have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. But what's exciting about what the SBA is doing is it's providing these uh, same basic high-caliber services and doing it at little or no cost to the individual. So you really have a, an opportunity as, as a, a, a startup entrepreneur to... To, to gain that knowledge that you need without having to find out that you're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars to somebody to, to try to do that, which is exactly. that's huge. Exactly. It's really an important, well, think of it this way. You know, as, as taxpayers, you've paid for the, the service that SBA contributes to you. Right. And you want to take advantage of it. And you want to do that in early stages because you really want to get good advice early on to make sure you're making the right decision. When you, when you start a small business, it's a huge undertaking. And right. people who jump into it, they really do need to do their homework. And you don't want people to do it before they're prepared. So a big responsibility that we take is to make sure that people, when they're starting a business and making a commitment to do that, because it's a, it's a full commitment that you Absolutely. make both for yourself and your family and the, the folks around you, that you want to make sure that you've done the homework to do that. So you you take advantage of the technical assistance to be mm -hmm. able to get good advice going in, and then you get yourself moving on the right track. And, and, and certainly make it a lot easier for someone to to reach a level of success, because a lot of businesses, they just get in and they get started, and they don't have that kind of guidance, and the failure rate can be pretty high. Mark, let me ask you this question. What really is, I mean, from the SBA's perspective, what constitutes a small business, right. quote unquote? Right, that's one of those, sounds like it's an easy question, but it's a more complicated <laughs> one than that. For SBA programs, most, first off, about 98% of all businesses in America are small. And so the definition of a small business is, is in technical terms, can be specific to the type of industry that it's in. But as a general rule of thumb, if your business is a retail or a wholesale business, or retail or service business mm -hmm. with less than seven million in annual sales, or a manufacturer with less than 500 employees, you would be a small business. Oh, okay. And then there are categories above that in certain types of industries that are higher than those thresholds. But what that really covers is almost all small business, especially service and retail business, which is by and large what we see. Right. Uh, most all of those businesses are small business. So if, you're, if your average annual sales is less than seven million, mm -hmm. you would be a, a small business by SBA definition. Got it. Now, a business that's been around for a while may experience changes in its market, mm -hmm. new technologies that are coming out mm -hmm. and, and that sort of thing. If, does a business have to be a new or startup business in order to take advantage of the SBA services or no? Well, new or startup, that covers both, Dave. <laughs> and it does. It, uh, if you're a new business, obviously we work with a lot of small businesses that are getting advice about starting a business. Right. On the lending side, typically most of the businesses who are looking for SBA loans uh, are in business and are looking to expand. That's typically the way okay. it is. But about 20 to 30 percent of the SBA loans at any point in time are startup businesses. Right. So a lot of the businesses that we do finance that are startups 
uh, are ones that you have to really start up. You can't start a restaurant part time. You kind of have right, to go right. all in. So well, we do a good number of uh, businesses that are startup businesses. Right. But I want uh, I want to let me rephrase that question then because if I've got a business and this business has been operating for seven years, ten years, eighteen years, whatever, things are changing in my environment. Mm -hmm. I'm finding that I'm behind the learning curve with respect to social media or whatever. Am I still able to avail myself of the SBA services on education to help me to learn this new technology, get into these new markets and things? Absolutely, I think that's really an important piece that. And uh, one of the things that we think is an important part of that is that we do a lot of training uh, and we try to do that at times that small businesses can take advantage of it, in no. the evenings and other times it works for them. But mainly is the idea that if you're in business as a small business and like you say, over time, you know, your industry changes and the environment around you changes and the way in which you want to reach customers is seeing, you see that changing. It's important to be able to get some outside advice about how to do that. Right. When you run a small business, it's a really, an, an, it, it, as much as you're dealing with customers all the time, many times people feel as though they're in it by themselves. Right. And yeah. the idea that there are, are you know, resources that SBA has that are available to folks to take advantage of because you really do want to go out and get more advice about how to do it. And as your industry changes, you want to get some advice about how to do a better job of marketing, mm -hmm. you know, better management of your business, different tools to do that. And so SBA provides a lot of resources for you to do it, to take advantage of that. Now, you said something there really interesting, and I see this all the time in, in my workaday life, talking to businesses and business owners, is that they they run into a circumstance and they think it's never happened to anybody else before, and they're in it all by themselves, and they don't recognize that there are sources of information that can help them come to grips with it and you get the experience of someone else who has already been down that path. So right. what you guys do is phenomenal. Mark, let me ask you personally about you. How long have you been with the SBA? Uh, I've been with SBA for about 25 years. Oh, great. Um, I've seen many, many fabulous businesses. I think one of the things that's, I have the best job in the federal government because I get to see <laughs> people who really do some incredible things. Small business owners are just really remarkable folks and, and they put a huge amount of effort into doing it and they deserve all the credit when they succeed. So. There's been a lot of uh, activity, a lot of change. We've had these economic challenges earlier in, in this decade, you know, 2008, 2009, 2010, and that sort of thing. How has, how, how did that impact, well, other than, the, well, I don't know how I want to ask this question. What impact did the, did the economic environment have on, on SBA activity? And I think I need to preface that a little bit because one of the, I want to go into talking about the SBA Guaranteed Lending Programs. And, and I think a lot of people, when they hear about the SBA loan programs, think that they're actually getting money from the government, which is not correct, is it? No, it's not. Well, uh, several different questions there. <laughs> yes, indeed. And, and I'd like to come back to the, you know, the, the, the fact that small businesses in the, in the Great Recession you know, have had to really uh, been resourceful to just to hang on. And right. you know, I, we've definitely seen small businesses struggle and, and many of them haven't been able to make it, but many of them have. And I think part of that is really the, the resourcefulness of small business, the, the fact that they are persistent and they stay with it, even mm -hmm. in tough times, they have to adapt because that's just what comes with being so a that's small what business. what you have to do, right. But to your other point, um, it is definitely the case that, that during the downturn, SBA lending dropped well, and now is kicked back up. Which is not inconsistent with lending in general. So e that, Exactly. That's... But your, your last question, I think, is an important one to make the point. SBA doesn't make direct loans. We guarantee loans. So there's a lot of folks that think when you get an SBA loan, you get it from SBA. Actually, what you're getting in most SBA loans is really a guarantee that SBA makes to the bank who mm -hmm. makes the loan. So you're really getting a loan from a bank. Uh, that's a couple of reasons that's important. One is that as a small business person, you really do want to have a bank relationship. Of course. And so it's important for you to be able to deal with your, your bank that you're doing your business banking with. SBA's guarantee allows a, a lender to make a loan that they otherwise wouldn't be able to make for a variety of reasons. But we're guaranteeing the loan to the bank in making that loan to you as a small business person. So you're not getting a direct loan from SBA. All right. So that that means then, if I'm understanding that correctly, that means that um, the SBA is saying to to the bank, "Look, Mr. Banker, uh, this might be a circumstance where you might not be comfortable mm -hmm. with lending, but 
we think it's worthy of uh, something, SBA saying we think it's worthy of something, so we will we'll back you up, basically, is what you're saying, and if something goes uh, haywire, you're covered, Mr. Bank, or at least to a certain percentage. That's not the technical terms <laughs> for it, but you got the gist of it, Dave. Um, it really is the case that a lot of uh, lenders have credit policies that, for some reason, eliminate a, a whole class of business, startup businesses, for oh, example, okay. or restaurants that from a bank's point of view might be too risky for their credit criteria that they say just by policy we won't do those. Right. SBA typically will guarantee 75 percent of a loan to a, to the bank that they still are, are making some you know part of that loan that is not guaranteed by SBA. Sure. So they have some exposure on the loan but not a full exposure on that loan. And so uh, the, the bank who otherwise would not be making that loan because they have a policy not to make a loan to say a startup SBA guaranteeing a portion of the loan allows them to make a loan they otherwise wouldn't make. Right. And it allows a business that could be showing, you know, very good cash flow early on or uh, is otherwise a business that shows every reason that you should expect it to, succeed, to be successful to be able to get access to credit at critical times for their growth. Right. So actually, in many cases, we, we fit in a, a role that, that works for a part of the, if you will, the, the history and life cycle of a business. Early on, most people start with their own capital. Right. Before they're really credit ready from a conventional loan, they need an SBA guarantee. And then as their business grows and expands, then they graduate into conventional financing without an SBA guarantee. So we kind of bridge that period of time where you're doing with all your own money and the bank's lending. Mm -hmm. So we allow a lender to be able to make a loan that they wouldn't be able to make mostly because the business is too young to be able to, to make the bank feel comfortable to make a loan themselves. Right. So if a business could qualify directly from a bank, does that mean that they would not be a candidate for an SBA uh, guaranteed loan? It's, it's a lot of reasons why a lender would say that we need an SBA guarantee. It might be because the, the collateral is not strong enough from the lender's point of view. It may be because they see that the business is of a type or an age that is not, you know, from their point of their credit policy point of view, that they wouldn't want to make. So there's times that, that a business looks like a good viable business to make a loan to mm -hmm. but because of the bank's policy on that and because regulators are really encouraging lenders to be cautious in their lending right what happens is banks pull back away from making credit available especially on the small end of the market but if the bank could if the bank looks at it and says yeah this all makes sense oh yeah and th they have the option well they certainly could proceed and do the loan directly to that business if those circumstances are such that they could and they they, w they would make those directly. Does that preclude the SBA involvement? If if a lender is able to make a loan without an SBA guarantee, they would do it because from but a, not because you guys are saying no no we don't want to play because they've are, they qualify for you so why right. are you coming to us? It's not that sort of a thing. Right. If they came to you and said look we want to do this for we got these reasons we want to do this you'd say okay let's take a look at it. Right exactly. Okay. Part of part of the the. The, the criteria to get an SBA loan from a bank's point of view is that they have to show that they would not be making a loan to this business without an SBA oh, guarantee. Okay. And the okay. reasons for it can be varied, but it is something that we say if you're able to make a loan to that business without an SBA guarantee, by all means go ahead and do that. Right. Since there's a fee charge to the, to the bank and then pass through the borrower, it's advantageous to the borrower and the bank to be able to make the loan as a conventional loan rather than an SBA loan. Right. However, there's a lot of circumstances that a lender will say we're not able to make this loan for a variety of reasons and an SBA guarantee is necessary for us to make the loan. So the, the first most important reason why from a borrower's point of view it's important to get an SBA loan is that without a guarantee you wouldn't be getting, not a, loan getting at all. Get a loan at exactly. all. Right. So these are loans that would be otherwise good credits from the point of view of being able to show that they have a re an ability to repay the loan but from a bank's point of view, have for policy reasons, are ones that a lender wouldn't be able to make that loan. Right. Now the SBA will have certain criteria against which it'll judge whether or not it makes sense to guarantee that loan. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And are those criteria different from the banks, or is it the same as the banks, or does the bank just um, abdicate to your criteria, or how does that all work? Yeah, that's a good question too. In other words, do, does the the bank's credit underwriting and the SBA credit underwriting the same? Typically what happens is SBA has the same credit criteria that they expect. The, the key one from, you know, from small business point of view, the key one is 
do they have a, an ability to show they have a repayment ability for the loan? If you're going right. to be getting an SBA loan, the key factor is can you show that you have from the cash flow of your business an ability to repay the loan? Mm -hmm. So we're not interested in making a loan that the repayment comes from collateral that you're putting oh, okay. uh, to secure the loan. It's really a cash flow expectation. Right. So the first thing is let's see what your historical cash flow is. What's what your business taking in as far as revenues to be able to repay a loan. So how do you deal with that if it's a startup that they don't necessarily have that? Through projections, you oh, know, okay. and, and really looking closely at two things. First, we look at project, three things. <laughs> so here we go. First is looking at the projections to see okay. that they're reasonable and they're based on the kind of industry expectations that make sense in, the, in any particular market. Uh, second is really to make sure that, um, that what we see is that there's enough collateral that secures that loan, mm -hmm. but just as important is really to see the equity that a business owner puts in the deal. So for a startup, uh, usually somewhere between a third and a half of what it takes to start the business, including some cash to, to get the first couple of months of operation, mm -hmm. about a third to a half of what it takes to get started, we would want to see the business owner put in as their own equity. He has it's to important. have some skin in the game so that you know that it's, he's got a reason to want to do this and it's not just, hey, I'm getting money from someplace else and so-so. You know. the, the skin in the game line is, is one that we all use, and that is, it's really, it is key. The, the idea that if you're putting your own equity on the line, if you've really made your own investment in the business, you're going to stay with the business when times get tough, which they will for every small business. Of course. And so the, the investment that a small business person puts in is really that thing that gives them the credibility with a lender that says, you're, you're putting it all in, so you, we have confidence in you that you're going to stay with this. Makes sense. I want to let the audience know that what, if they have questions for Mark regarding anything we're discussing here with the SBA, to please send in those queries to info at referencepointtv.com. I'll make sure he gets them and they will be able to, to get their questions answered. And I want to remind you folks that we're actually going to do two episodes here. So we're, we're, we're talking some basics right now, but when we get into the next show, we're really going to get into some specifics regarding the types of uh, uh, programs that the SBA has for businesses of, of different sizes and, and configurations and stuff like that. So that's my public service announcement there. So let's get back to take sure. a look at some of these things. So I th the the um, so so the size. Uh, I want to go back to the startup scenario because a lot of times uh, um, businesses who don't have um, a product or service yet, mm -hmm. or who need some, you know, somebody who may be trying to get a franchise or something, you know, and they have to go through whatever they have to go through in order to do that. That that's not an area that's, uh, uh, or let me rephrase that in the positive way. That is definitely an area where someone could qualify for an SBA guaranteed loan, provided mm -hmm. they've got some of these <coughs> basics in place. Right? Sure, they have some uh, some capital that they put into it, etc. Does the SBA I, like banks do, does the SBA concern themselves with the uh, the credit score of that the individual? Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, when anytime SBA is making a loan to a small business person, we're really making a loan not to a business, but to the to entirety the, of the people who are running it, the owners, uh, and everyone involved as investors and owners in that business. So, uh, what, you know, a part of the thing that makes small business people really remarkable to me is is that they have to put all in of everything that they have, which right. includes, in many cases, putting their homes as collateral for that loan. It comes as part of the expectation. Lenders will say to a small business, if you want us to be invested in your business, we want to see that you are as well. Right. So it is definitely the case that we look at the credit history of, of the individuals. Uh, we look at the track record of the business, the credit history of that as well. Uh, we look at the tax returns and and the financial statements that say, "Here's the picture of the business." Uh, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the things about a small business are, come with the character of the individual. Right. But a lot of it is about the numbers as well. So a bank who is, who is overseen by a regulator, wants to be saying, "I'm making a, a prudent loan. I'm showing that this is a, a business that has the financial wherewithal to be able to perform right. on this loan." So they really need to look at that. So it is the case that they will, as a small business lender, want to see all the financial information you know, that relates to that business, including the financial information of the owners. And I think that's real important for us to, to have talked about because the, we're, we're talking about creating a business. 
Okay, and so if you're going to be doing that as an individual or, or a partnership or whatever, you know, a small group, you really have to recognize that it's not just like, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it, it's not a hobby, okay? One of the things that's so fascinating to me and, and also gratifying to me is to recognize that when you look at the um, um, small business as the engine of employment, I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's so much greater than, if, than when you say, well, GM hires so many people and these guys employ so many people. But there are, what, 25 or 30 million, some small businesses, huge right. number of small businesses as you defined them earlier, sure. which is a, a sub substantively large population right. okay, that, it can, that it can service. And so I, I think it's important that people understand that, yes, as a business owner, you may never have done this before, but you need to put that mindset on. You need to wear I'm an owner hat as mm -hmm. opposed to I'm a hobbyist hat. Right. And you're going to go through these... Um, uh, steps, these assessments by the, the financial community to make sure that you, in fact, are going to be able to sustain your business as time goes on. Oh, absolutely. I think one of the important messages early on is that people have an interest in doing something that they love to cook. So I should start a restaurant. You know, I have a great barbecue recipe. Shouldn't I start a barbecue business? Right. But the truth is, is that what we want to make sure people do is understand that you're making a full commitment to making this work. And you mentioned the employment that small businesses have. You know, so many small businesses do employ people because, mm -hmm. you know, most of the net new jobs in the economy come from small businesses. Right. But those, those jobs that those small businesses create, the small business owner has this huge sense of responsibility to make sure that those jobs are strong jobs that carry on into the future. So you carry, as a small business person, a huge sense of responsibility, and you, you have to make sure that you know what you're getting into. Indeed. Mark, we've reached the end of the first segment of our, of our conversation today, and when we come back at the next time, folks, we're going to talk about some of the programs that the SBA has. I'm going to throw out some, some terminology here, and we'll get into it in detail. There's 7A loans, there's 504s, and there's a few other programs that some of you may have heard about, but that we're going to get into detail when we get talking uh, to Mark in the next segment of our show. So, Mark, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate this. We're going to continue this conversation for the next episode of Reference Point, and I really appreciate your presence here. And you, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time on Reference Point.